What's up, friends? For today's creative guest, we've got the multi-talented actor Tommy Hobson on the show. Tommy's appeared on multiple TV shows and films, including a long run on the Nickelodeon show Fresh Beat Band, with his character Shout, where he sang, danced, and acted, plus his new character Bodie on the Disney show Bunked as well as playing a 15-year-old Michael Jordan in the Michael Jordan and American Hero movie. Not to mention having roles in NCIS Los Angeles and the TV series Driven with his character Dane, but also the new show Paws Raz and the fantastic TV series Sherman's Showcase, where he played a character from one of my favorite movies, Bruce Leroy. All the way up to the new film 12 Hour Shift, which was nominated at the Tribeca Film Festival, and also the soon to be released film Ghost of the Ozarks, a period piece set in 1866. And we also can't forget to mention his stage presence, as Tommy's done multiple theater performances, going so far as to win an Ovation Award for Best Actor in a Musical for the production of Ain't Misbehavin'. As always, if you appreciate the creatives that we showcase here, leave a like or a comment and subscribe to the YouTube channel or podcast. All the links are in the video description. Let's go! Welcome, Tommy. I appreciate you jumping on, man. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you for jumping on. Um, I saw your post the other day, um, which I was super excited to see you uh, working uh, again or, or production back up again. Um, I saw you uh, were doing uh, Bunked on yes. Disney. Yes. Yeah, that was awesome. Season five, episode seven. Yes. Yeah. Rock is science. What a, what a fun, what a fun little world they've built there. And I, and yeah. I said, I been fortunate enough to work a lot through the pandemic but like mm -hmm. you know disney just does things well you know for you know you can if you want to you can always find something to talk about with disney that's maybe not great but like <laughs> that you know out of all the sets and, I, and i've felt really safe on on 99 of the sets i've been on but i walked into that one and i was like oh you guys have like a corporate structure like from the very top of the company down like i had to do a 30 minute uh like hr session with like the 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 uh the covid relief team where they walked me through a 30 minute video of like all the things that were being done to keep me safe all the things expected of me all you know like the things seen and unseen i i you know i was there for four days and i didn't see my co-stars faces until the fourth day when we filmed because we just kept masks and and, and face shields on and mm -hmm. uh you know and i was like this is weird but also you know if this is what it takes to work then then okay they had a whole structure in place yeah Wonderful structure yeah yeah and your character was uh was fun i watched it uh your little oh poncho bodie <laughs> Bodie with the with the poncho with the with the, with the alpacas on it, man. It was uh, just so weird. It's it's funny, you know. I, I did a Nickelodeon show forever, and I've really been yep. scared of the return to that space because I was just like, oh, you know, I'm really working so hard to try to show people that like I'm more than the broad comedy of a Disney Channel or a Nickelodeon. Um, and Buddy, who helps me put stuff on tape, was like why are you shying away from this? Like, you're really good at it. So have fun with it. And I sent the tape in just being dumb. And there you go. <laughs> yeah, your, your character Bodhi was hilarious. And, and I know what you're talking about, um, trying to uh, separate yourself from that whole uh, Nickelodeon, you know, Disney, um, Fresh Beat Band thing, where it was great to see you on a Disney show, like a kid's show like that again. But as a whole different style of character where you actually had a beard and got you didn't have to be 18 again <laughs> yeah well that's what that's what my buddy my buddy who helped me put the audition on tape because i definitely have every time i get an audition for a nickelodeon or a disney channel anything i have an existential crisis where i'm just like i don't know because it's been so much work the last like four or five years of trying to like shake that off and show people the full breadth and width of my talent um and he said to me, he said, okay, two things. One, you're very good at this. Mm -hmm. He said, two, this is not that character. Like you're you're coming back to the space, but you're coming back as a very grown man. Um, you know, it's not a little boy. And this guy, I mean, Bodhi was just, I, I couldn't believe that A, I got away with the first audition. And then <laughs> when I did the callback, they were like, everyone loves what you did, just do that. And then when they hired me, I was like, they're going to tell me to calm this guy down. 
mm. you know, just and they and they actually just kept pushing me, nudging me further. And I was like, okay, great. I, I this this is fun. Also, that schedule is fantastic. Um, because the Freshby Band was musical, we didn't have that kind of schedule they have, where I was just there like two to three hours a day, you know, on the Freshby Band because it was musical. Yeah. You know, my first two to three hours of my day was just dance rehearsal, and that was before I even showed up to block anything or rehearse anything. And then shoot days because you have to film music videos or, you know, 12 to like 15 hour days. So I was like, I was doing it wrong. I should have <laughs> this. You got right. life. <laughs> got to figure it out now. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, Fresh Beat, I guess you, you did have rehearsals and you probably had choreography and then you had lines and- Choreography, you know, lines. Dry runs. Uh, dry runs Saturdays, sometimes after like long Friday nights on set, I'd be up Saturday morning in the recording studio, you know, recording the next week's songs, like, you know, piano lessons, uh, you know, where they could squeeze them in. Um, and no complaints at all. I was very, very happy to be employed and very, very happy to be busy. Mm -hmm. But looking back on it sometimes, I'm like, yeah, no, you you should have been sleepy then. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. I gave myself yeah. a really hard time then because I was uh, always tired. And I was like, no, I should have been. Yeah, exactly. That kind of schedule you're going to be. Um, the uh, the Bodhi character was awesome and bonked, but working off of that i don't know who the kid was um when he when he's like granola and more wow wow like that was his acting he was good at granola wow he's gonna yeah. spit it out yeah that those the funny. kids on that show are phenomenal they've got a great yeah. little community around them of resident directors and and an acting slash dialect coach who's there uh was also crazy that i showed up and like five or six of the crew members, including the director and the script supervisor uh, and the associate director were Fresh Beat Band people. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It was like a mini family reunion uh, mixed in with all that. But yeah, I know that those kids are great. Uh, um, I do, I, I can't remember his name right now, but that, that guy in general, like he just, mm -hmm. his reactions to it. And he's got this really like fun placement of his speaking voice, yeah. you know, because they're all like, you know, 11 to like 15, 16. So it's that weird sort of transitional phase. And so his voice mm -hmm. hasn't landed as deep as it's going to. And so it's kind of like here. Yeah. Here, and it's just a fun, I'm like, I remember that voice. I had that yep. voice. I remember yeah. that. It was, it was actually a really funny episode. Um, and uh, the poncho, the poncho killed me. <laughs> the alpaca poncho, man. That's my alpaca poncho. They got it off Amazon. Um, I had on like some weird, like very soft, like sweater, sweatpants. Mm -hmm. Like they looked like they'd been knitted out of like a sweater, but they were sweatpants. I had on some uh, some Birkenstocks. Yeah, Birkenstocks. Yep. Sandals that had smiley faces on them. Yep. I, I, it was it was wonderful. I was very comfortable. Um, <laughs> and I told him when I, when I left, I was like, uh, you know, one of the crew members pulled me to the side and she said. I think they're trying to figure out how to bring you back. And I was like, please nice. tell anyone who's listening, please know I will come back in a heartbeat. This was one yeah. of my favorite things I've gotten to do recently. So that's good. That's awesome. When it's a, when it's a good crew, good set, good family, you know, that's awesome. Yeah. And um, it, it was interesting to see you as a playing a director on a TV show. Have you have you ever thought about actually directing or doing any directing? Uh, you know, it's funny. A couple years ago, someone asked me that and I was like, I've never thought about it. Hmm. Um, and then I said, but like, how do you even like, what do you even do? What do you even like? I don't even know. And, and one of my friends I was on a set with, they were like, Tommy, you already do it. Yep. It's so natural to you that you don't even know you're doing it. Every time yep. you, every time you're in a scene and you are in it and you see out the corner of your eye that this camera's having trouble getting the shot it needs and you adjust yourself, but never lose, you know, that he's like, like yep. you see all of the big picture stuff. You just think that that's your actor side when in fact you've just been acquiring all of these other skills just kind of by osmosis so that's definitely like in the future i i i my partner actually he was like i love that your first time playing a director you got to play like the worst form of director like the director <laughs> thinks he knows what he's doing and actually does not and i was like yeah and i've worked with a couple of those i i, I didn't yeah. have to reach too far yeah you drew from experience <laughs> Yeah, you know, like I said, again, the majority of them have been amazing. I, that was not the 
pair because that that director jody uh, he, yeah Marvel, jody knew she's, knew, she's just, knew what she was doing she, yeah that's yeah. her she's so good at that brand of comedy she's so good at it you, i think you said she uh directed one of the episodes of fresh peak band before right it, yes, yeah. yes and on our table read uh which was on zoom she was like hello thomas uh also it's good to see you i directed an episode of your show and i was like what oh my gosh you directed season one the episode with the missing violins and she went, oh wow i was like yeah i don't know how i just pulled that out of my mind <laughs> you remembered after like how many seasons you remember that one we, we we filmed 60 episodes of that show and i haven't filmed it in such a long time that i should not remember things like that but it's it's funny how certain people make an impression on you yeah 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 and the, the directing side it uh i remember i was at a mixer with uh with jacques one time and um we we ran into we met the uh cinematographer of house remember the show house it was on fox whatever yeah. and i was talking to him because they shot an episode on a, a dslr and so i was talking to him about what he thought about that um because there's a lot of hollywood snobs that you know it's got to be on a re alexa or it's got to be on you know cinema camera or whatever um so I wanted his opinion since he's a cinematographer and how he thought the future was going to go in with filmmaking um, since they're a big production studio using a DSLR. And he said it was great because it was able to get into tight spaces and do the shoot. That's the only reason they used it was because it was a smaller compact size uh, for the scenes that they needed. Um, but then he told me, he said, well, you're an actor. Have you ever directed? And I said, no, I haven't. I haven't really even thought about it. And he said, you should do it at least get behind the camera once because most directors that are good directors at least um have done some sort of acting class or course or you know know more about acting because they can help direct an actor if they've done some acting vice versa and so yeah i took that to heart and then we um filmed the uh, murphy our, our independent film and then um you know I still do some directing stuff now and that's kind of it's really good to get on the other side of the line well, yeah, I, I, you're right. I tell people that um, I produced a, a short film a couple of years ago, and when I finished it, I was like, wow, okay. It's nice to play in the other sandbox because mm -hmm. as an actor, waiting for opportunities all the time or getting opportunities and then having to like haggle back and forth over what the opportunity is, what, I, what my art is worth. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I said, there's been those times when I've been like, I just want the extra hundred dollars. I don't understand why we're haggling over this. And then all of a sudden I'm producing a project and I'm, you know, and I'm the EP <laughs> and I was like, we don't have it. We don't <laughs> have it. It's not in the budget. If I give you a hundred dollars, I, I don't know where I have to take something from somewhere else. And at this point, this tiny budget is stretched as far as I can stretch. And I was like, oh, okay. Remember that yeah. later on. Uh, also, I think that every actor should sit in a casting session yes, uh, so that you can understand how little it has to do with you. Mm -hmm. That I've been really surprised the times I've sat in casting sessions, how often my favorite person wasn't the person that even I was like, yeah, let's hire that dude. I was like, that dude was the best person. Oh my God, he's so great. This person though fits this the energy of what you wanted more and so we go with this guy but mm -hmm. oh my gosh that guy was great and so often in my career i've been you know the feedback is the, the guy who was great but this other person had the physical look or had the hair or the eye color mm -hmm. or the, something that's completely out of my control mm -hmm. uh and, and it took away a lot of the um anxiety and it mm -hmm. and it took away a lot of the the doubt uh and a lot of like the the the, the rejection issues because i was like oh it's not it has nothing to do with me right it has nothing to do with you yeah i just have to show up and do my job well and yep. hope that i'm the vision that that you maybe didn't even know you had but it's so random when uh, in the movie i produced we were looking for we had hired uh a black woman to be the mother and we had all these little black kids coming in. And then this little um, Asian boy walked in and he was magical. <laughs> and I was like, oh crap, I hadn't thought of it this way, mm. but it could work this way. How can we make it work this way? 
right okay and then we had and then we got like we got um we changed the script so that the kid was supposed to be uh because the actual male lead was asian and we changed the script so that the kid was his biological son instead of his stepson ah uh, yep yep vice versa it's one of those things where like it just all clicked in and i was like oh there were so many really wonderful kids but something's really wonderful and special about the way this kid's connecting i i, I and i will say that i was right because about him being special because he mm -hmm. has since gone on to be one of the leads in a wrinkle in time the disney movie a couple years ago mm -hmm. and now he's on uh an apple tv series uh oh, good for him. i think they're doing two of it right now um yeah i can't think of the name of that one right now but i was like yeah no little derek and i was like that kid mm -hmm. so yeah, again i say all that to say that like in this business with all the multi-hyphenates that we become Right, you know, in the pandemic, we've all become freaking, you know, IT people, and you know, like, <laughs> uh, but, but, you know, like it's it's all, that's one of those experiences I would say have if you can produce something, if you can direct something, if you can cast something, like, just it all just makes it all make sense, and it takes it takes the um, it makes it less personal. Mm -hmm. You know, I think yeah, I'm knowing saying, the business end of it, knowing the um, technical aspects of it. It, yeah, it, it brings it down a little bit so it's not as personal or, or emotional like you're not emotionally attached to it as much yeah yeah i remember speaking of the casting sessions we i sat in uh, with one of my friends casting session and um there was a guy that walked in and, and did his scene and it was very interesting for me to see the other end of the casting table because you know you've been in to an audition and there's like 10 people sitting there and you're like why is there so many people sitting here for this one audition one guy's over there on his phone not even paying attention you're just like what, <laughs> what is happening um so to be on the other side of that we were sitting there and this guy walked in younger fella and he did his whole he like come, walks in he's got this energy and he tells us this whole story about oh, i just saw this on the street it was like a, a, a hummer and a guy got out of traffic and like he started yelling at this other guy and like had this whole and we're sitting there like oh wow and then he did his scene. It was like, wow, that, that was pretty good. I was, and then our producer came in after, like an hour later, after everybody was done. And he goes, so do you guys find anybody you you think fits the, the roles? And we're like, oh, we like this guy, this guy right here. <laughs> we so we told him about him. He goes, really? Watch it back. He goes, I don't think so. Watch it back. And so we played back the footage from his audition, and it was completely different seeing it filmed than it was in the room. The energy in the room. Wow. and it rubbed us the wrong way after we watched it on the film we're like oh he comes across it just it wasn't the right energy we're like oh this is different so it was really weird to see that that's wild yeah i never never knew that it would be that different from in the room to being filmed and i know people are really sensitive to energies especially these days um <laughs> yeah. you know like everyone's like i mean at this point to get a job you know like i'm sure part of me getting bunked was that like so many people on the set who are regulars were like, oh, this guy's, a, you're going to like this guy. He's very, he's nice. He's warm. He's fun. Like, you know, he's going to get along with everyone because, yeah. you know, it's just, there are so many uh, a-holes, as my as my mom would say, in our business mm -hmm. um, that everyone's trying to avoid them <laughs> yep. Yep. now. Like, oh, let me see if I can find out before we get started. Um, you know, like, you know, it's like at this point, the running joke is like, if you want to work for Shonda Rhimes, you know, like you have to pass like a government level background check. Like she's going to ask around yep. and find out if you are a problem because she's like, I've just been burned too many times. And mm -hmm. now like I'm not working with anybody that, that, that has a reputation, anybody that even has a hint of, you know, a uh, jerk in them. Like, yeah, no, I get yeah, it. Yeah. We spend a lot of time together and it's, um, mm -hmm. You know, I tell people now because I can talk about it, but like the first season, the first two seasons of the Fresh Beat Band were really hard because one of the girls, one of the ladies on the show, um, was just in a really rough place in her life outside of the show. And mm -hmm. she would bring that energy every single day into the studio with her. Oh, yeah, that's and not it, good. It was just so toxic and it was so hard to try to like keep the spirit of the show up and keep everybody happy when you didn't know what she was going to do every day you know yeah and then they yeah. replaced her and you know people were really upset and we weren't we weren't allowed nor did we want to tell people what had happened because that wasn't really our place but it was i was like you know trust me things are much happier now the truth is that like it was a really sort of 
try as we did to keep it from being dark it could be a dark place sometimes depending on her mood and yeah. that taught me a couple of really valuable lessons but like the one i've taken with me is just that like your energy mm -hmm. is so powerful yep especially if you are top of show if you're one of the leads on the show the mm -hmm. energy that you bring into the space every day is really important and sets a tone for how everyone else acts because if you as the star mm -hmm. come in stank and ugly then <laughs> that trickles through everyone else and the real sort of aha moment for me was season three when we had the new person in and we're all loving it the mm -hmm. three original leads we're all having a good time and like we love this new person we love her energy and then uh one of like the grips came down from like the scaffolding up in the sky you know lighting yeah. us came down and he was like, hey, it's different here. Much lighter, I like it, it's more fun now. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I didn't know that you guys, that everyone knew. And he was like, no, we really admired how hard you all tried to keep that energy from ever getting to us. Like we mm. really loved, really loved you all who are still here because we could see you working so hard mm. on these long days to be like, okay, everything's fine. <laughs> Try to muster through it. Try to muster. That's why it's just like every now it doesn't matter if I'm, you know, a, a one day guest star or, you know, there for four days or the freaking lead of a movie. I'm like, every single day, I'm like, hello, hi, what a joy it is that we get to do mm. this. And how are you? And how are you? And how are your children? And like, genuinely, you know, um, trying to help promote, you know, that, that, that energy, that positive energy. Yeah positive energy because it's who i am but also mm, it right make, it just makes it easier especially if you're doing like I, I did a film over the summer and it was my first time being number one on a call sheet of a movie you mm. know and, and and it was heavy stuff sometimes and on those days in particular i would really want to be as happy when the cameras weren't rolling as possible <laughs> you know i'm like yeah. spend the day you know me running for my life or whatever the heck we're doing that day and uh so let's just laugh between takes oh because the subject matter was so heavy and the and the movie was heavy like, yeah. yeah 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 and, and there are definitely moments within that where i was like okay well now we're filming the hard thing so like yeah. for this time that we're filming it i'm gonna go ahead and try to stay in that space so that i don't have to you know yeah yeah go get, back into character yeah get the tears back but like i'm not generally <laughs> an actor who I'm, I don't, I'm not a stay in character all day kind of person. No. Like once we, once we're done, I put it to bed. Yep. Uh, my favorite on, on the Fresh Bee Band, there'll be times when we get to the end of the day and they go, oh crap, we realized we missed a shot in a scene four hours ago. Can we just go back since we're in the same space and just film it? And I'd be like, I need five minutes. Mm. For what? It's like, I don't remember those lines. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the worst. They're gone. Once I film them, my brain lets them go because I need space for the next batch. Oh, see, I can remember lines from like years ago. It, like I had to do ADR one time for a film and it was like a year or two after the film is done. Like they were still doing post-production like a year later um, and they needed ADR because some, the footage got messed up and I had to go in and do ADR and I just went in there and did my lines. She's like, <laughs> the 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 uh, director's um, AD was there, and uh, she's like, "Do you do you need your script?" I was like, "No, I remember it. <laughs> I, it just comes up. It's like once it's in there, it's in there. It's burned in there." Well, you yeah, you uh, you're you're more. Although I, I will say, you know some lines. There, you could pop up some lines I, from I years mean, ago. I, I'm gonna say, I'm like I don't, but like I, I honestly, still, I made this joke with a friend the other day. The monologues that I do. Oh yeah like stuff yep. are the monologues that I learned when I was like 18, 19. Yeah. And so when people are like, do a monologue, I'm like, Ahem. all right, yeah. do you want a picture selection? Do you want a drama selection? And they're like, oh, wow. I didn't know you'd have it ready. And I'm like, yeah, no, I, yeah, no. I did them in the college and I, you know, I did them for auditions in auditions. college. Auditions, yeah. And they, they're, they're stuck. Now. You've got a Rolodex of, of monologues. Yeah. yeah, I think what happens to me though is my brain my brain protects me from things so like when i was on the fresh beat band you're singing these songs every day and people will be like how do you do this show and the songs aren't like stuck in your head i listen to them with my kids 
and I can't stop singing them. And I was like, there's a special lockbox oh. in my brain where like songs and lines go and they hang out there so that they're not playing in my head all day. Oh yeah. I was like, I don't know how it works. I, I, I but I, I don't question it. I just appreciate it. That's probably one of the worst things is being on set and there's a certain, like a specific song and you're doing 20 takes and you have to hear that song over and over and over. Like to this day, I cannot hear Beyonce's All the Single Ladies. I, like I instantly have to turn it off because I had to hear it on set for like two days straight over and over and over and over. And I can't, I, I can't do it. Yeah, it drives me nuts. <laughs> yeah, no, I could, I could see that. No, like when I do musicals too. When I do musicals, my family's always like, oh my gosh, those songs are stuck in my head. Do you just sing them all day? And I'm like, no, honestly, uh, when I'm off stage, I can't tell you how the songs go. My, oh, my brain, yeah, yeah. And then as soon as the music starts, I'm like, oh, there it is. There it is. Yep. It's kind of like getting into a character. You just get into a musical yeah. character. There was yep. one night it scared me though. I was doing Jesus Christ Superstar. <laughs> I was playing Jesus and I was standing in the wings and they were playing the overture. And I could not remember my opening like lyrics. Uh -oh. And I at my castmates and I was like, hey, does anyone know the first thing I say? I just need to know the first thing I say and then it'll all come back to me. And everyone was like, no. And I was like, you guys not listen to me every night? And they were like, I mean, no, we're dancing. And so I walked out on stage, the band hit the chord. There was a millisecond too long. And then I said, oh, there it is. And just started singing. But, uh, oh, shit. I was like, oh, no, I have no idea. <laughs> what would you have done if you didn't click? You just make something I, up. I, I, I cannot I cannot tell you. I'm so happy I didn't find out that day. Right. And you, don't know, you never want to find out, right? <laughs> I never said do. I never do. I mean, I have had moments on stage where, like, lyrics fly out of my head or people miss their cues, and then you have to, like, create a whole thing. And it's just so much easier, obviously, when it's a non-musical yeah. you know like get the train back on its tracks when it's a musical it's just like yeah because you have to be on rhythm with the musical yeah that's that you got to go to the music and and that's once it's once it's off track it's it's not going back on unless you no, skip I, I or jump one, cut yeah, i did once like end up scatting in like the production of dream girls i just forgot like a measure worth of lyrics and i was just just like, you know, just like Scooby the Bop Boom Boo Doo. Just make it stuff. I was like, like <laughs> we got off stage. She said, What? I was like, I it just <laughs> just washed over me. No, that's the uh, the theater eyes, the oh, oh crap, I forgot my lines. The the, the big eyes, oh crap. Scooby doo boo boo doo. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 me. It's you asking your scene partner to please save you. That's what it yes. is. Yes. Yep. Do something. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of shows and working on good environments, um, you brought up Shonda Rhimes, and I just want to put this out there in the universe um, because I worked on um, Grey's Anatomy and Private Practice, which obviously Shonda Rhimes did, um, and I, I ran into her once there. Um, so I, you know, I didn't work for Shonda Rhimes, but I worked on her show. Um, and I'm trying to get her, I'd like to get her on the podcast. That would be phenomenal if I could get Shonda Rhimes on there. So I'm just going to put that out there in the universe and hope it all comes back. But yep. Uh, she actually left Disney now and she's with Netflix. Yeah. 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 I'm sure. She's kicking themselves uh, for letting that happen. Oh but yeah, I, for sure. It's funny because people like to, you know, I've seen a lot of people, especially in the, Bridgerton aftermath people were like all this because Disney wouldn't give her an extra pass to their park one day and I was like uh, it wasn't about that sometimes you have final straws and the final straws seem in insignificant because you don't know, like the build up to that final the backstory story. right it wasn't just about a pass it's probably a no. multitude of it's a multitude of offenses and then it boils yeah. down to the day like I'm over here fighting to be devalued by you and I've made you billions of dollars. And not just that you wouldn't give me a ticket to Disneyland, but the like the phrasing of why. The, the yeah, 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 yeah. Like, have it, don't we already give don't, her enough? Don't you have enough? Don't have enough. Is, is what like, I heard they said, but I don't know. $150. Yeah, yeah, yeah. $50. Because in the reverse side, it's like, haven't I given you enough? Yeah. <laughs> or haven't I done enough for yeah. you? 
you know, she's, like she's multiple sh- multiple shows, number yeah, one shows. Two passes as part of her contract, and that particular day she needed a third. Come on. Yeah, and that that's the funny thing to me is Disney took a stance, and it's like, really? You choose now to take a stance on that little thing? Um, well, it I'm wouldn't sure cost whoever, them anything. It's literally yeah. just entrance, entrance I'm into sure whoever the. Whoever took the chance doesn't work there anymore. <laughs> Probably more than likely. <laughs> that, who knows? You don't want to be the person who lost Shonda Rhimes right before she created the largest show of her insanely. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, she's still got she's got multiple shows out. She's um, she's one of the top writers, producers, creators out there. And she knows her audience. Like it was great yeah. to hear new interviews where she where she was like, oh, like no, like my producing partner Betsy Beers, and even like. You know the head of netflix was like this is a bad idea like no one's gonna want to watch a period piece drama tv show and shana was like you're both wrong yeah and yeah. i'm right and they both had to uh in the preamble to the show coming out um they were doing press they both had to be like yeah she was right we should have <laughs> doubted her like this had to eat, eat their words yeah she she gets it she gets this world she, she, she yep she knows her audience and she knows how to create uh, a show for sure she's she's like um ryan murphy yeah in, in that sense i love ryan murphy which i worked with i worked for as well which i'd love to have him on the show i'm gonna put that out there as well i'm trying to reach out to him but it's ryan murphy come on uh, and shauna rhymes um <laughs> <laughs> but uh i worked with him on glee and um he creates multiple number one shows as well and so he's like the male version of shauna rhymes to me and another person who, you know, I mean, I think Fox treated him with much more grace, but, you know, still kind of was like, oh, what Netflix is offering me is like complete autonomy over my project. Like, uh-huh. they're not going to interfere. They're going to let me make whatever I want. And I don't have to worry about network notes and, you know, all of those things that can really sort of bog. I mean, I, I know like even even with something as like fun and family friendly as the Fresh Pea Band, there were so many moments when like we'd do a run through and everyone would love it but then there'd be like one person from standards and practices who was like oh you know i am um, i think they were sad too long so <laughs> out of the sadness faster the kids can only handle like you know a few seconds of the sadness then you have to do the spin of like but it'll be okay you know and i was like yeah. okay. but also like I don't know, I'm not a parent uh, or, or a psychologist, but like, it seems to me like that's not how life works. And, 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 and in the most gentle and loving way possible, it might be okay mm-hmm. for like a kid to watch a show and their favorite character has something happen to them that they don't just get over. Right. That it takes them a couple of minutes to like be sad about and then be like, okay, you know what? Here's what I'm going to do to make myself feel better or to fix the problem or, you know, but they really like to jump from, Oh man, we have a thing to do today. We're not gonna make it in time. Oh, it's okay. Uh, yeah. You know, you're like, okay. <laughs> Just that microsecond of sadness, and then it's right back 360 or yeah. 180. Also, I I hate slash love how quickly I jumped right back into that voice. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you went right back into character. I told you it never leaves you. <laughs> <laughs> Those are probably lines from one of your episodes too. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah. Because I was usually the person who was like, "But it's okay. We can, we can just yeah. do this instead. We'll, we'll fix it. Don't worry about it." Yeah. <laughs> <That's hilarious. laughs> Come on, guys. Um, speaking, joy. speaking of uh, some of your other stuff that that, that you did um, recently was a uh, Sherman Showcase. Yeah. Didn't you do Bruce Leroy? I did do Bruce Leroy. I was, I was like, yes, Bruce Leroy, because a lot of Gen Zs and kids nowadays, they don't know who that, what that is, but man, that movie. The best thing about that was um, yeah, my two my two buddies, uh, Diallo Riddle and Bashir Salahuddin, uh, they created the show. Um, hmm. Bashir plays Sherman, Diallo plays uh, his showrunner on the show. And um, they also do Southside, uh, which was on Comedy Central, was now at HBO Max. And they just sold another show about college acapella groups and stuff. And I'm just like, they're just like killing it right now. And it's so nice. great. And they basically invited a group of us who were like their besties mm. to hang out on set and like get thrown into stuff. Nice. And so season one, it really was just like, we filmed eight episodes in four weeks. Mm. And 
I think the first like week and a half, I was just like, oh, I'll dance in this thing. I'll do this stuff. And I was like, oh, I'd like to do some, oh, here's all my scenes. Oh, okay. Like we just hadn't gotten to them yet. And then with, with the Blue Bruce Leroy, that was our Black History Month spectacular that aired in June, which I thought was hysterical, mm -hmm. uh, which was someone said, did you not finish it in time? No, no, that was the joke. The joke was like, we didn't film it until February of 2020. Uh, 2020. So when it aired in June of 2020, it was right on schedule. Uh, but they said, hey, can you, have you seen The Last Dragon? And I was like, I've seen The Last Dragon. Of course. The Last Dragon, like yeah. at least a year, we get a group of people over and that's one of like the nostalgia movies we play. Yep. Uh, he said, okay, great. You're gonna be Bruce Leroy and like a reimagining of it where shown up is the hero. And I was like, great, great. They put that yep. wig on me, that that yellow- the yellow suit. Yellow yep. jumpsuit, and I was like, Okay, I will say that got uncomfortable because they made me wear a dance belt, which I had somehow, as a theater person, had never worn a dance belt. And so, mm -hmm. you know, 10 hours later, uh, you know, it's basically just a man, a, a man thong, but they call it a dance belt. And so I was like, how do, you ladies, how do you ladies like handle, like it literally like was like, oh, a it, what? It, yeah, it was flossing. So hours, it was flossing. It was just like this friction. And uh. I was like, <laughs> You, <laughs> you're like i can't do any more jump kicks guys sorry you did it at some point uh <laughs> yeah i will say that there's a sequence in it where i come kick jumping through a window uh -huh. uh, i deliver all these crazy zen lines and then i high on my way through them and then i jump kick out another window <laughs> i will i will go to my grave i've got a lot of things i'm proud of but i will go to my grave for telling people that was one take nice one they had all the cameras set up. I came in, I did it, jumped out the window. They were like, that's a wrap on this, we're moving on. And I was like, really, we got it? And Diallo came up to me and he was like, thank you so much. Um, Listen, I didn't want to scare you or put any more pressure on you, but we were so far behind schedule that we could only do that once. <laughs> and I was like, oh, well. <laughs> Glad yeah. I did it perfectly. So you did the stunts and the lines all in one take. He's like, uh, we're behind schedule and we only have one window. <laughs> yeah, well, it's funny because of course the set design people were like, just so you know, if, we, if you don't get it right, we got like five more windows. And I yeah. was like, cool. And then I was standing behind it, waiting for them to call action. I was like, wouldn't it be cool if you got it right the first time? <laughs> were you really talking to yourself? Oh, I was like, come on. <laughs> like. They gave you, friends gave you this wonderful comedic moment. Just, just do it. Just, just come on. Come, come on, Tommy. You are Bruce Leroy. Come on. <laughs> I was really happy about it. I was, I loved the way yeah. it came out. that episode was great. Yeah, we were supposed to be filming season two. Um, actually, I would have wrapped season two uh, maybe a week ago, um, mm. but, which I actually admired them for. The production company and the network uh, said about like right at the top of the year, they said, hey, listen, we're sorry to do this to you all. We know that we've been ramping up, getting ready to start filming. I think my first day of work would have been January 26th. Mm -hmm. And I uh, said, but we're gonna, we're gonna postpone uh -huh. uh, until hopefully October. Oh, um, wow. Said, but like the way the show is filmed, a COVID set is just not, Conducive, conducive yeah because the way we film is like legit they just call their celebrity friends and they drop by and it's like a little party on a set and we <laughs> film these funny things and you just can't you know you can't do that right now and the spirit yeah. of the relies on it so much that they thought well maybe if we wait till october you know yeah. uh, things will be a little more a uh, little clearer and people will be vaccinated and you know um we can we can even if we're not 100% at the way we filmed, we'll be close enough that that spirit is still there. Right. Shimmer Showcase, it's on uh, Hulu. It's IFC and Hulu. IFC yeah. and Hulu. Okay. All the reruns on Hulu now. Season one's up. The Black History Month special in June is up. Uh, and yeah, so hopefully in October we'll film season two. Like I said, I, I honestly, you know, as much as like as an adult who has to eat and like pay bills, I was like, dang it. <laughs> I really want to film this show right now. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I really sort of admired and appreciated that they were just like, you know what, we want to do this right and don't worry, it'll happen. Um, but we would just rather do it 
at a time when there's just less concern. And I was like, yeah, but also it's, you know, IFC is not a huge network. And so when you have to add in, you know, all of the people who are on the show who would have to be tested three times a week, you know, yeah. like that's a lot of extra, that's a lot of extra money. So plus quarantining and stuff like that. Yeah. They're like, don't worry. Scripts are, scripts are, are locked. You, you, everyone has parts that have been written for them. We'll just get to it. Mm -hmm. in October. And I was like, okay. Yeah, but I'm, I'm glad Makes people sense. are enjoying it. I'm glad people are finding it, especially on Hulu. I get a lot of messages from people who are like, how did I not know you were on this? And I'm like, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't I, know. I advertise it a lot, but maybe maybe not enough. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe some more more shots of the Leroy. Yeah. <laughs> Front jump kick. We'll get them in there. <laughs> I think people like, scroll through Instagram and they see the clip. I'm like, oh, this is funny but you know they forget to actually they don't know it. what it's for maybe yeah they don't know the whole context of it yeah I mean, we don't not all of us read the caption i've learned uh on a post so yeah <laughs> over the summer I, I filmed um this movie called ghost of the ozarks which i'm actually really excited about i just got to see it last week uh they oh, sent cool. me a private link and i was like holy crap I think this movie is everything I've ever wanted anyone to see me doing at one time. And I just can't wait for like other people oh, cool. to see. But there was this weird moment where I'd spent most of the first part of quarantine with my parents at their house because they live near LA. And it was just like, why would I be in my house hungry and by myself when I could be at my parents' house mm -hmm. full and you know with wonderful company? Because my partner was back into his family. Uh, mm -hmm. when the whole thing started and then just stayed there to help them out. Yeah. Uh, so I got a phone call on June 2nd saying you booked this movie and you leave on June 11th. And I was like, okay. And I was on a plane uh, 10 days later, mm -hmm. flew across the country. I went from like, I haven't left my parents' neighborhood to I'm on an airplane. Uh, <laughs> and then entered into like, a crazy wonderful but crazy covid bubble i mean like to the point where like the hotel that people were staying in the floor that we were on was sealed off from even like oh. the, from even like the people who worked there couldn't get on the floor oh cool wow um i i i opted to stay in a house um with the producers mm -hmm. uh, just because i was like you know i i, I want to at least be able to like sit in the backyard and like breathe and you know have some some air but it was just this really strange like seven weeks of my life um where like i literally only saw the people i worked with and most of them had masks on the whole time the only people i really saw were actors faces when the cameras were rolling yeah um, and that was like i guess i left in june so it was like stag gave us permission to do it they were watching us very closely and a lot of what my set did sag then put into like their rules for what they wanted and we had no positive tests no scares you know like two weeks after we all got back home everyone took a test that we were sent home with and they reported back and we're like we're all fine nice and he was just like oh my god i've never i said no that was a four-year journey for him too like he had been getting trying to get uh -huh. this movie for four years and you finally get it you know the money it needs and the locations and you build the little town in arkansas and then a global oh, pandemic in the States, yeah to add add everything on top of it yeah and you have to decide you know do i do i do it anyway right or, you know or do we do we push and they pushed and pushed and pushed until it was like okay we, you know we got to get the testing and we got to just do it and i got to work with um i said that was my first time being number one on like a movie and I got to work with Tim Blake Nelson. I got to work with David Arquette. I got to work with mm -hmm. Phil Morris, who like, I tell people all the time, like Phil Morris is a guy you've seen in everything. Mm -hmm. And you look him up, when I say his name, people are like, huh? And then people look him up and they're like, oh my God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They He's recognize his face. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, my my my, uh, my girl, Tara Perry, who was on the Fresh Be Band with me, she co-wrote the movie uh, and is in it. it. So it was just like this really sort of surreal experience of like, I'm acting across from <laughs> mm -hmm. Tim Blake Nelson in the middle of a pandemic. If you had told me that that would be how I would spend my June and July, I would have told you you were a liar. 
but what a what a what a gift. Is this the same film that you uh, we talked about uh, when we had breakfast that day? Yes. She she just secured the funding for it, I think. Yes. Yes. Okay, yeah. Yes. Um, so we got it all all filmed, and it's ninety nine percent of the way through uh, through post, and I think now they're just trying to figure out, you know, in this crazy landscape we're in, you know, what to do with it. You know, it's, it right. was all magic. I think as being a uh, something you could sit in a theater and watch. Um, I watched it you know, here in the suburbs at my parents' house, but my dad insisted on getting an 80 inch television. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it, 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 you know, there's, there's speakers all around the, the room and I'm like, okay, all right. Surround sound. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's as close as you can get without getting there. Um, right. I'm just really, it feels like one of those moments as an artist, but I'm sure you definitely understand where I'm just like, I think everything I've ever wanted is on the other side of this moment and we just need to get mm -hmm. to that moment. Yep. And because of the pandemic, um, you know, the path is is not as and it's never a straight path, but it's definitely not straight right now. <laughs> and so how do you, you know, like what is the what's the smartest route? Because last year the same company had a movie um and it was like picked to be you know, one of the narrative uh, movie competitors at Tribeca, like one of the top 10 films at Tribeca, like. Oh, was that a 12 hour shift? A 12 that... hour shift, yeah. Oh, it's just the same production company or same yeah. people. Oh, yeah. okay. Cause yeah, yeah you were in 12 hour shift as well. You were in that yeah. one. Yep, also on Hulu. Hulu. Hulu's liking my stuff right now. I appreciate that Hulu, thanks. Yeah, that one's on iTunes and Amazon Prime, I believe. Yeah, iTunes, right? Amazon Prime and all of those, uh, all those outlets. And yeah, we. I mean, we yeah. filmed it in April of 2019. Mm -hmm. um, in January, late January, I got a text that was like, hey, are you sitting down? And I was like, yeah, they were like, 12 hour shift got into Tribeca, like we're competing in like the top competition. Yep. It's gonna be this date. And like, I mean, I was I was sitting, scrolling on, on Sherman Showcase set, scrolling, looking at suits. I was <laughs> like, to New York, I was so excited. And then yeah. I, I was like, you know, this pandemic thing is weird. Let me hold off and I was actually one of the only people in the cast who had not purchased a ticket. Uh, uh, like, I don't think this is going to happen, y'all. Yep. I don't think it's going to happen. And, it, and it went, they did a virtual Tribeca. Yeah, which was still, I mean, it still was seen. Yeah. It still got sold. It had a theatrical run in the fall. Now it's on Hulu. But, you know, I, you know, they, they want the other experience for this one. So, right. And I'm okay with that because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at the helm of this one and, and I want as many people to see it as possible. Um, I'm playing a father, which, you know, I could be, I definitely could be when, when I was, when my dad was my age, I was 16, my sister was 12, my brother was eight. Uh, so, you know, anything's possible, but it was weird to walk on set and all of a sudden I had a wife and a 15 year old, <laughs> 13 year old. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can do yeah, that. Yeah. that. It fits you though with the the beard and everything that I like. I like that lane. Thank you. Yeah, that's what my reps were like. That age know, range. They were very hesitant about the beard, and then they were like, "Oh wait, I came back from Arkansas. Uh, I zoomed them my last week on set just to be like, hi, checking in. I'm safe. Everything's great. Sorry, I haven't called. I'm just I'm tired. I'm in almost every scene. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when I got back, I took pictures in it." um with it and those are my new headshots and oh you know, good my agent and my manager were like yes <laughs> yes so much of the nickelodeon stigma is that people think you're a kid mm -hmm. and they're like this is definitely like he's not a kid anymore yeah you know and i was like yeah okay great great it's just you know i wish i was better at maintaining my own beard <laughs> <laughs> so like you yeah. know every like, two weeks every like two to three weeks I have to go to my buddy and like, you know, yep. safely sit in an area where he can just like, you know, and he's double masked and he's just yeah. helping, lining it, it up. Out. Yeah, it's so I much work, dude. Down. I can only trim it down. I can't like shape it or anything. It's just. And then if you do shave it down or trim it all the way, like it just grows back two days later. It's like, yep. ugh, it's so much work. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was that movie called? It was a uh, ghost of the Ozark. Ghost of the Ozarks. Yeah. And, and do we know when that's coming out yet? Uh, we don't. I'm hoping okay. the fall, I'm hoping that, you know, by the fall, 
we'll have, you know, a little more, maybe maybe movie theaters won't be at 100%, but they'll be at 50 or 75% or something. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I actually saw them briefly today, the producers, and once again, didn't ask because as much as I want to know the answer, the other part of me is like, but, you know, if it's something that's far off, you know, I'm just going to stress out about it until it yeah. happens. So maybe the less I know, Yeah, better. and it's out of your control, so. It's out of my you know. control. And yeah. at this, I just know that like whatever it does, I will be proud of, you know, of, of it being out in the world and I'll feel happy that people will see it and go, oh, okay. My best female friend, I told her that I saw it and she said, uh, she said, great, send me the link right now. And I was like, no, <laughs> I can't do that. She said, no, they won't know. And I was like, they won't know, but I'll know. And I just, I'll know, yep. I don't want it to ever even come up casually one day yep. that, you know, you saw it way before you were supposed to. So at this point, yeah. mom, dad, myself, and my partner, like we, we've mm -hmm. all, he had to yep. watch it in Miami on his own, but the rest of us got to watch it here in our, in our parent, in my parents' house. Yeah. And I mean, you're watching it with the people in the same room. You're not giving the password and the link to other people that yeah. could go anywhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And the only person I did pass it to was the one person I knew they'd say, <clears throat> I knew they'd say yes to, which is you know, my partner, because usually he's yeah, here. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. You know, He'd be in the room with you if he could. So. In the room, but there's a pandemic and, you know, yeah. he's, 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 uh, holding down the fort with his mom. So it's like, yep. yeah. Um, well, next time we're in town, man, well, I'll have to, uh, we'll have to definitely go eat at that brunch place. And Casino can't stop talking about it. Gosh. Uh, listen, um, play people harvest moon. Yeah. In North Hollywood. So good. <sighs> Harvest Moon is where it's at, at maple bacon and their pancakes and ah. I'm probably wondering where my where we are because we order from there so much that that place <laughs> another breakfast place called Vivian's that we love, and we order from there so much that they're like, oh hey guys, the usual, the usual, the usual, uh, yeah. And you that last time I was there or even ordered from there was with you, so it's been been a long time. Yeah. Well, well, hopefully they're still there, and we'll, when we're in town, we can go eat there. I, I like I like to go to um, Blue Jam too. Blue Jam's really good. Yeah, Blue Jam's very good as well. Yeah. And hopefully uh, next time we're in town, Trina and Kevin will be nearby because I think oh. Kevin's in San Fran, and then uh, I think Trina was in Hong Kong that that time we were there. She was, and then uh, Kevin just got a he bought himself a car, and he was like, "Yeah, so, that Tesla." <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I'm coming down. I was like, listen, do it. I, I think, was it Calliope or something like that? He named it. I can't wait to meet her. Uh, yeah, I forget what the name was. He's posting on Instagram and everything. I said, welcome to the family. You're, you're, he, not, dis you're, you're not going to be disappointed. Yeah. He texted me um, like the week before he bought it. And he was like, do I need a car? I was like, I mean, if you want one. Yeah. <laughs> do I need a car? <laughs> I specifically need a Tesla, specifically this Tesla. And I was like, yes, you do. Yes. Ke Kevin kills me. We went shopping, me, Trina, Kevin, and some other people. And, and uh, he, they want to go to Rodeo Drive. And I'm like, really? I, 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 I go to Rodeo, but I don't shop at Rodeo. <laughs> And he goes in, he tries on these shoes. Do I, and he, he said the same thing. He looked at me, he goes, do I need $350 shoes or four, whatever they were, like $450 shoes? I'm like, I don't know, do you? <laughs> he got them. And then yeah. we proceed to walk down the street, right to the next door. He gets another pair of like $575 shoes. He's carrying two things of shoes that are over thousands of dollars. I'm like. Yeah, in my early, in my like early 20s when I met him, well, I met him, I guess when I was 18, uh, my freshman year of college, and he was a senior. And then, you know, he's, we, I started going to New York with him, started shopping with him. My parents were like, you're spending a lot of money on clothes. But... <laughs> He'll do it. Like, like my friend said, like, you know, you have like, yeah. the, 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 like young, like teenage look, but now I'm finding my adult look, you know? Uh, you need this, you definitely need this. Yeah, so now I tell him all the time, I'm like, every time we see him, he's like, are we going shopping? I'm like, I have a mortgage now. <laughs> Kevin I, kills I, me. I don't get to shop like that anymore. I'll wait till those shoes are 75% off. And then uh, I'm like, okay. Yeah, he kills me. Uh, do I need these? I need these. Uh, he's funny. The answer, the answer is always yes, by the way. Yeah, he, right. He asks, he, oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. If he needs them, yes. If I need them, yeah. no. No, no. <laughs> no, no. I'm... Yeah, you can't tell him no. He'll be severely disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tommy, I appreciate you hopping on, bro. Yeah. 
um, uh, on the YouTube, I'm going to link everything down below. So um, all your social media, everything will be linked down there. If anybody wants to reach out to Tommy, uh, if you guys want to collaborate with him, um, he's a super down to earth, down to earth person. So hit him up on social media, um, check out all the links uh, on YouTube. And for anybody listening to the podcast, um, all the films and everything that we talked about are on iTunes, Hulu, uh, Amazon Prime, Disney. So thanks. Thanks. Yeah. I know, I know it's, it's late over there for you now. So, uh, yeah, go to bed. Oh, all good. I have insomnia, so I stay up late. <laughs> 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 I sleep maybe four or five hours a day. Oh, um, nice. Yep. Well, I appreciate you hopping on, Tommy, man. We'll, we'll uh, link up, catch up later. And be good, man. Keep creating, man. Bye, friend. All right. Bye.